Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the T's. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the ATI T study manual, the sixth edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today is our lesson number 178. 178 page 101. Please turn to page 101. Make sure you have the book in front of you. We are going to do problem number 25 and 26. These questions are from the quiz that they call, uh, what they refer to as the quiz, which began, which began on page 99. And we are referring to the quiz as test 3. If you are interested in solving problems from two more exams, exam number 1 and exam number 2 appeared in this book, the previous edition, the fifth edition, you will find that we have solved every single problems that appear every single problem that appeared in the previous edition the fifth edition from day number 1 through 80 and the exams are from day 61 through 70 exam 2 the test 2 we did from 71 through 80 just type in t's day 71 and you will see exam number 2 today we'll do problem number 25 and 26 problem number 25 says that we want to paint a room problem number 25 says that we have to paint a, another room rather let's 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 be a little let's 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 be a little bit more clear we, we, our job is to paint the four walls in a room and in a question like this when something like this appears in the exam this is a simplified version of the reality. Just assume there are no wall. Uh, just assume that there are no windows. There are no doors in that in that in that room. We just figure out the surface area of the four walls. So that is the question now. What is the surface area? What is the surface area of the four walls? And the reason we just pretend that there is no window, there are no windows and there is no door is because you just measure the surface area of the four wall, you buy the paint based on the surface area, you're going to have some left over, that's it, put a, put, give it an extra coat, that's all. But we have to figure out how, what the surface area is for us to figure out how much paint to buy. Do I buy one gallon, uh, one gallon? do I buy two gallon, do I, do I need, am I going to, if, I, if I'm going to buy, uh, paint enough surface area, maybe two or three rooms, maybe the whole house, maybe it's cheaper to buy a five gallon paint assuming that you want to buy paint the same color so here's what we, here's what we know we know that the, that the floor of the room floor of the room we are told is nine feet by nine feet and nine feet and ten inches by nineteen feet and eight inches this is a lot of writing, I understand. And we also told that the height, height of the room, height of the room is 10 feet 6 inches. So what I'm going to attempt right now, what I was going to, I was about to say, what I'm, what I'm about, what I was about to say is what I'm going to do right now. But I, I don't want to make that claim. What I'm about to attempt to do is to actually give you some idea as to what we are looking at here in, with, with, the ad, uh, with, with the help of a picture here. So here's, here's our floor. Here's the floor of the room. Hopefully it will come out right. See, it does, not, it does not look very nice, does it? So here's our room. And we are told that the length of the room is 19, in, 19 feet 8 inches. The width is the width is 9 feet and 10 inches. But you can't go by that. We're not painting the floor, we're painting the walls. So here's the first wall. This is the wall here. And this is all the way up to the ceiling. This is the ceiling here. So we have to know how high it is. We know how high it is. We know it is 10 feet 6 inches. This is the, this is the height of the wall. And this is how long the wall is. Similarly, when we get to this part, I'm going to raise all of these things so you can actually see properly. So that's, that's this wall right here. It is 10 feet high and 
19, 19 feet and 8 inches tall. Now let's, but keep in mind that we have one wall here and one wall here. They're facing to each other. There are four walls obviously. So this whole thing that we see here has to be multiplied by two. Because there are two of them. I'm going to do it on this side here so we, we, can, we can have some room. Times two. So far so good. So let's erase this thing and let's, let me see if we can finish this up a little bit better. And then we have two more walls. This is the front wall, this is the back wall, there is a front wall and there is a left wall and a right wall. And the left wall we're going to draw right now. This wall right here. Again, the height of this wall is the same as before, which is the which is which is how high the, which, which is the height of the room, which is from here to here, is 10 feet by 6 inches. But the width is going to change now. The width is this part right here. The width is this part. It's no longer 19 feet. It's the other part, which is right here. 9 feet and 10 inches. So the other two walls that we're looking for, the other two walls that we're looking for, have the dimensions of 10, by 10, to 10 feet 6 inches, by 9 feet 10 inches so and we have two of those two of those 10 by 6 inches 10, uh, 10, 10, 10 feet 6 inches which is the height times the width which is now 9 feet 10 inches and that's what we have to figure out and we are done let's do it on the top I'm going to raise this part here because it's, ugly, it's pretty ugly anyway That is why I was thrown out of the art school. Okay, that's it. Let's do it here. Okay, so we have we have two times ten feet six inches times nineteen feet eight inches plus two more of these plus two more of these two times ten feet six inches times 9 feet 10 inches. That's it. Now keep in mind that we are taking a multiple choice exam. This is not an open-ended question. This is not an open-ended question where you have to figure out the precise answer and the answer is either right or wrong. This is a multiple choice exam. There are four answer choices. Our job is not to waste our time to figure out the precise answer. Our job is simply to be able to recognize what the right answer is. And for that, estimation will do the job. So that's what we're going to do. We're not going to do we are not going to do the precise calculation, we are going to estimate. So here we go. 2 times, well this is not an estimation, this is exact, because six, 10 feet 6 inches is 10 and a half. Times, here we go, 19 feet and 8 inches, I am just going to pretend it's, I'm just going to pretend it's 20, 20 feet. So in other words, we are approximating, nine. we are going to be off by 4 inches, that's okay. We are, we are approximating this as 20 feet. And similarly here, you can approximate this as 10 feet. It says 9 feet and 10 inches. 9 feet and 10 inches is going to be pretty ugly calculation. Let's just pretend it's 10 feet. 10, 10, 10 feet. So it's 2 times 10 and a half because 10 feet 6 inches is 10 and a half foot times 10 feet. Let's see how, to, let's see how we do this part here. This part right here. 20 times 10 and a half is very simple. 20 times 10 and a half is very simple. 20 times 10 is 200 and 20 times half, half of 20, 20 times half is same as saying, half of 20, well half of 20 is 10. So that takes care of this part, that takes care of this part, times 2, times 2 because there is front wall and back wall, so times 2, times 2. This is 2 times 210, we are done with that part. Now we're going to worry about the other two walls, which we're going to do it in a different color. Again, again, we start out by 10 times 10 and a half. 10 times 10 and a half. Even though it says 10 and a half times 10, 10 and a half times 10 is of course the same as 10 times 10 and a half. But why do we bother to write it in this order? Because it makes it easier with the arrows. It makes it easier with the arrows to see. Here we go. So first we do 10 times 10, which is 100, and then half of 10. Half of 10 is 5. And then, don't worry, 
don't, don't forget rather we have times two times two times two because there are two walls there are two walls front and back left and right so this is 105 105 times two two times 105 it's going to be 210 there is your final answer Our, oh we never finished this part this is two times two times 210 is 420 plus 210 this is our final answer we are looking for something we are looking for something and what's going to be the unit the unit of course is going to be square feet square feet because we did not write the unit here because all of them are this is feet and inches which we can learn into feet feet times feet 10 and a half feet times 20 feet it's going to be feet squared 10 and a half feet times 20, 10 feet is going to be feet squared so the final, final unit is feet squared we're looking for some answer that comes closest to 313 330 square feet and 330 square feet represents the total square footage of the four walls total square footage of the four walls is four is 630 square feet let's see what answer choice we have here 630 this was number 25 number 25 there we go if you look at the answer choices first one says 860 that's too far away from 630 we're looking for something that comes closest to then we have 480 and we have 330 the only thing that comes closest to it is answer choice b answer choice b says 660 square feet apparently that's what you will get if you were to waste your time doing the precise calculation but nobody's going to give you any brownie points for that. Do you understand? So, don't do it. Let's do the next one. Problem number 26. In number 26, we are told that the distance from Denver to Salt Lake City there are two cities Denver and Salt Lake City it says that it measures 10 centimeter on a map on a map we are looking at the map and on the map they are shown as being 10 centimeters apart but we know that in reality we know that the actual distance actual distance is 518.6 miles again before we do any work at all you should realize that when we start doing the calculation we are not going to waste our time with 518.6 approximate it, approximate it as 520 but approximation, as I have always, as I, as I told you many, many times, is an art. Approximation is not a code for go bunkers. When we say approximate, that does not give you license to go bunkers. Do you understand? We could have said that 518.6 is about 500. 5, 518.6 miles is about 500 miles. 500 miles. But that, then, in that case, we would have been off by 18.6 miles. That's just too much for my taste. Do you understand? That's just too much for my taste. It depends on the context. It depends on the context. Do you understand? If you're talking about a distance from here to moon and you're off by 18, 18 miles, it's not a big deal. It's not a big deal in that context. So you have to look at the situation. We are told further that we are told that if Denver to Cheyenne is 2 cm what is the actual distance as we can see we are making a big fuss about nothing at all much about about nothing as I said why? because we are told that 10 cm 10 cm is about 520 miles 
Okay, they don't say 520 miles, they say 518.6. We are approximating that is 5. But we, uh, we are approximating 520 miles. But we are not interested in 10 centimeters. We are not interested in the fact that 10 centimeters is about 520 miles. We are interested in 2 centimeters. We want to know how much is the distance if something is shown as being 2 centimeters apart. Uh, apart. Well, this is 10 centimeters. Well, how do we go from 10 to 2? Just divide by 5. Well, if you're going to divide this side by 5, you must divide that side by 5. That's it, we're done. We're done. So, 10 divided by 5 is 2. So now we get 2 centimeters approximately. 520 divided by 5. Let's divide it. How many 5 does 5 have? 5 has 1 5. How many 5 does 2 have? 2 has no 5. What happens to that 2? That 2 goes and joins the 0, becomes a 20, and 20 has 4 5s. Since we divided the top by 5, 5, we, have, we must divide the bottom by 5. And it makes perfect sense. It makes perfect sense that it comes out to be 104 because we know 500 is made up of 100 5s. 500 divided by 5 is 100 and 20 divided by 5 is 4 because 5 4 is a 20. Pick an answer choice. Among the, all the answer choices that they give us, pick the answer choice that comes closest to it. That's it. Don't waste your time doing the precise calculation as I tell you over and over again. The correct answer choice is D which we are told is 103.7 miles and as we said already if we were to sit there and do the precise calculation and come up with, come up with exactly 103.7 miles like a goody two-shoe there are no brownie points to be had do you understand? I'll see you tomorrow. Bye now.